Hi there, and welcome to day number 249. I am so pleased every time you come back to listen. Today we read 1 Chronicles 23 and 24, our first reading in Proverbs 21, and Titus 3. Let's open to 1 Chronicles 23. Yesterday, we heard a rather odd story about how Satan rose up against Israel and caused David to take a census. But in 2 Samuel 24, verse 1, we read that, quote, Again, the anger of the Lord burned against Israel, and he incited David against them, saying, Go and take a census of Israel and Judah. So who was it, Satan or the Lord? And if the problem was caused by someone else, why was David and all Israel punished? I think in a place like this, we have to go back to what we learned in Job. God brought up a topic to Satan, Satan responds predictably, and God gives him permission to tempt and sets the boundaries. In other words, both God and Satan are involved. God does not tempt people to do evil, and God is in ultimate control. Satan is like a dog on a leash. And about that punishment that God gave, God arranges events in such a way that man, in this case David, is still in control and responsible for his choices. Why was the census considered a sin? This seems to be founded on the idea that Israel, according to God's promise, was to be as many as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. In other words, uncountable. Remember back when Moses conducted a census, there was a money offering given for every male counted. Making a military census would show that David was trusting in numbers instead of God's power. And we hear more about this subject in First Chronicles 27. First Chronicles 23 When David was very old, he made his son Solomon king of Israel. Heading, The Work of the Levites King David brought together all the Israelite leaders and all the priests and Levites. He took a census of all the male Levites aged thirty or older. The total was thirty-eight thousand. The king assigned twenty-four thousand to administer the work of the temple, six thousand to keep records and decide disputes, 4,000 to do guard duty, and 4,000 to praise the Lord using the musical instruments provided by the king for this purpose. David divided the Levites into three groups according to their clans, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Gershon had two sons, Ladan and Shimei. Ladan had three sons, Jehiel, Jetham, and Joel, who were the heads of the clans descended from Ladan. Shimei had three sons, Shelomoth, Haziel, and Haran. Shimei had four sons, Jahath, Zina, Jeush, and Beria, in order of age. Jeush and Beria did not have many descendants, so they were counted as one clan. Kohath had four sons, Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. His oldest son, Amram, was the father of Aaron and Moses. Aaron and his descendants were set apart to be in charge of the sacred objects forever, to burn incense in the worship of the Lord, to serve him and to bless the people in his name. But the sons of Moses, the man of God, were included among the Levites. Moses had two sons, Gershom and Eliezer. 
The leader among Gershom's sons was Shebuel. Eliezer had only one son, Rahabia, but Rahabia had many descendants. Kohath's second son, Izhar, had a son, Shalomith, the head of the clan. Kohath's third son, Hebron, had four sons, Jeriah, Amaria, Jehaziel, and Jekameam. Kohath's fourth son, Uziel, had two sons, Mika and Ishia. Merari had two sons, Mahli and Mushi. Mahli had two sons, Eleazar and Kish. But Eleazar died without having any sons, only daughters. His daughters married their cousins, the sons of Kish. Merari's second son, Mushi, had three sons, Mahli, Eder, and Jeremoth. These were the descendants of Levi, by clans and families, every one of them registered by name. Each of his descendants, twenty years of age or older, had a share in the work of the Lord's temple. David said, The Lord God of Israel has given peace to his people, and he himself will live in Jerusalem forever. So there is no longer any need for the Levites to carry the tent of the Lord's presence and all the equipment used in worship. On the basis of David's final instructions, all the Levites were registered for service when they reached the age of twenty and were assigned in the following duties to help the priests descended from Aaron with the temple worship, to take care of its courtyards and its rooms, and to keep undefiled everything that is sacred, to be responsible for the bread offered to God, the flour used in offerings, the wafers made without yeast, the baked offerings, and the flour mixed with olive oil, to weigh and measure the temple offerings, and to praise and glorify the Lord every morning and every evening, and whenever offerings to the Lord are burned on the Sabbath, the new moon festival, and other festivals. Rules were made specifying the number of Levites assigned to do this work each time. The Levites were assigned the duty of worshiping the Lord for all time. They were given the responsibility of taking care of the tent of the Lord's presence and the temple, and of assisting their relatives, the priests, descended from Aaron in the temple worship. 1 Chronicles 24 these are the groups to which the descendants of Aaron belong. Aaron had four sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Nadab and Abihu died before their father did, and left no descendants. So their brothers, Eleazar and Ithamar, became priests. King David organized the descendants of Aaron into groups according to their duties. He was assisted in this by Zadok, a descendant of Eleazar, and by Ahimelech, a descendant of Ithamar. The descendants of Eleazar were organized into sixteen groups, while the descendants of Ithamar were organized into eight. This was done because there were more male heads of families among the descendants of Eleazar. Since there were temple officials and spiritual leaders among the descendants of both Eleazar and Ithamar, assignments were made by drawing lots. The descendants of Eleazar and Ithamar took turns drawing lots. Then they were registered by Shemaiah, son of Nathanael, a Levite secretary. The king, his officials, the priest Zadok, Ahimelech, son of Abiathar, and the heads of the priestly families and of the Levite families were all witnesses. This is the order in which the twenty-four family groups were given their assignments. Jehoiarib, Jediah, Harim, Seorim, Malkija, Mijamin, Hakoz, Abijah, Jeshua, Shekaniah, Eliashib, Jakim, Hupa. Hashebeab, Bilga, Imer, 
Hazir, Hapizes, Pethahia, Jehezkel, Jakin, Gamul, Delaya, Maazia. These men were registered according to their assignments for going to the temple and performing the duties established by their ancestor Aaron in obedience to the commands of the Lord God of Israel. Heading The List of the Levites These are the other heads of families descended from Levi. Jehdeia, a descendant of Amram through Shebuel. Ishia, a descendant of Rahabia. Jahath, a descendant of Izhar through Shelomith. Jeria, Amaria, Jahaziel, and Jekameam, sons of Hebron in order of age. Shamir, a descendant of Uziel through Mika. Zakaria, a descendant of Uziel through Ishia, Mika's brother. Mahli, Mushi, Jaazia, descendants of Merari. Jaazia had three sons, Shoham, Zakur, and Ibri. Mahli had two sons, Eleazar and Kish. Eleazar had no sons, but Kish had one son, Jerahmeel. Mushi had three sons, Mahli, Eder, and Jeremoth. These were the families of the Levites. The head of each family and one of his younger brothers drew lots for their assignments, just as their relatives, the priests, descended from Aaron, had done. King David, Zadok, Ahimelech, and the heads of the families of the priests and of the Levites were witnesses. Let's turn now to Proverbs 21. Here is a verse I chose to highlight for today. Verse 13, If you refuse to listen to the cry of the poor, your own cry for help will not be heard. Proverbs 21 The Lord controls the mind of a king as easily as he directs the course of a stream. You may think that everything you do is right, but remember that the Lord judges your motives. Do what is right and fair. That pleases the Lord more than bringing Him sacrifices. Wicked people are controlled by their conceit and arrogance, and this is sinful. Plan carefully, and you will have plenty. If you act too quickly, you will never have enough. The riches you get by dishonesty soon disappear, but not before they lead you into the jaws of death. The wicked are doomed by their own violence. They refuse to do what is right. Guilty people walk a crooked path. The innocent do what is right. Better to live on the roof than share the house with a nagging wife. Wicked people are always hungry for evil. They have no mercy on anyone. When someone who is conceited gets his punishment, even an unthinking person learns a lesson. One who is wise will learn from what he is taught. God, the Righteous One, knows what goes on in the homes of the wicked, and He will bring the wicked down to ruin. If you refuse to listen to the cry of the poor, your own cry for help will not be heard. If someone is angry with you, a gift given secretly will calm him down. When justice is done, good people are happy, but evil people are brought to despair. 
Death is waiting for anyone who wanders away from good sense. And today we finished the little letter of Titus with chapter 3. We continue today with more true teaching for our spiritual health. We might consider chapter 2, verse 14, as a heading for all of today's reading. That verse says, He gave himself for us to rescue us from all wickedness and to make us a pure people who belong to him alone and are eager to do good. Titus chapter 3 Remind your people to submit to rulers and authorities, and to obey them, and to be ready to do good in every way. Tell them not to speak evil of anyone, but to be peaceful and friendly, and always show a gentle attitude toward everyone. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, and wrong. We were slaves to passions and pleasures of all kinds. We spent our lives in malice and envy. Others hated us, and we hated them. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior was revealed, He saved us. It was not because of any good deeds that we ourselves had done, but because of His own mercy that He saved us through the Holy Spirit, who gives us new birth and new life by washing us. God poured out the Holy Spirit abundantly on us through Christ Jesus our Savior, so that by His grace we might be put right with God and come into possession of the eternal life we hope for. This is a true saying. I want you to give special emphasis to these matters so that those who believe in God may be concerned with giving their time to doing good deeds, which are good and useful for everyone. But avoid stupid arguments, long lists of ancestors, quarrels, and fights about the law. They are useless and worthless. Give at least two warnings to those who cause divisions, and then have nothing more to do with them. You know that such people are corrupt, and their sins prove that they are wrong. When I send Artemas, or Tychicus, to you, do your best to come to me in Nicopolis, because I have decided to spend the winter there. Do your best to help Zenas, the lawyer, and Apollos to get started on their travels, and see to it that they have everything they need. Our people must learn to spend their time doing good in order to provide for real needs. They should not live useless lives. All who are with me send you greetings. Give our greetings to our friends who share our belief in true teachings. God's grace be with you all. Let's go to the Lord together. Heavenly Father, as Paul says here, you are indeed our Savior. Thank you. And Lord Jesus, Paul also names you as our Savior. Thank you, Father and Son, for your amazing kindness and mercy that put us right with you. Thank you that this was not at all based on any good works done by us. We are so encouraged by the words that we possess eternal life now We don't have to wait for it, even though we wait with hope for all that that will mean. Therefore, what use is it for us to carry around malice or hatred? None at all. Please forgive us. Help us to get rid of all vestiges of our former foolish and disobedient lives. 
and please help us to see that our possession of eternal life now means that most of our quarrels and arguments are useless and foolish. Guide us in maintaining the precious unity between our fellow believers. May we also, like the believers in Crete, learn how to provide for real needs, especially helping people who are sent out to do your work like Zenas and Apollos. May your gracious kindness be with us, working in our hearts and motivating what we do and say today.